So this is my non-leather life. She is a YouTuber who gives dating advice to men, and right now she's facing a rather frustrating ordeal. So she's alleging that another YouTuber, who shall remain unnamed for now due to legal reasons, has been shamelessly plagiarizing her content. According to My Non-Leather Life, this other YouTuber with nearly 500,000 subscribers has recently been copying her videos almost word for word and topic for topic without giving credit and passing off the work as her own. Now, someone in her comment section mentioned the name of said person, so I went to investigate. Turns out it's a woman whose videos I've actually been seeing quite frequently on my channel as of late, and she puts out pretty good content. So I was surprised and disheartened to hear that it may have been taken from this other content creator that I also follow. But hey, before we assume anything, let's compare two of their videos side by side and see if my non-leather life's claims hold weight. We're going to compare a video that she posted two years ago on March 3rd, 2021, titled 10 Secret Things Girls Deeply Crave in the Bedroom But Will Never Tell You, with this other YouTuber's video released on February 9th, 2024, titled Nine Things Women Crave in the Bedroom But Are Too Afraid to Tell You. Now, just from the titles, it's hard to ignore the similarities, but let's go ahead and play the clips from each video and see if they sound the same. Well, before we get into the video, I have to make a disclaimer. Um, these are very powerful, very dangerous things. They have to be used for good, not evil. You guys have to respect people's boundaries. So these things that I'm about to share with you must be taken very seriously and used for good. Try your best to communicate and discuss what somebody is into before trying any of these out or else you may be very <laughs> shocked by the consequences. Communicate consent verbally before you try these with any woman or else I will come find you. And I'm half Cuban, so people don't like to piss me off. First powerful thing that guys do in the bedroom that they don't understand the true power of in the bedroom is the power of giving orders. So the first thing which I actually learned from reading many of Dr. Robert Glover's books and or many other books written by men, the power of using a command and or giving orders and or telling a woman exactly what you want her to do. So a lot of times in the bedroom, um, people are more making requests, people are more making suggestions, they're more tentative. There's a big difference in any woman's mind on how you phrase this order versus a request. They do everything but a true order. A true get on the bed, period. We are talking about using every piece of your masculinity, such as telling a woman to take off her clothes and go lay in your bed while you go brush your teeth. Like a real short, direct, you're gonna do this. Now what I'm talking about is short, sweet, direct, AKA you're going to do this, okay? Number three thing that is extremely powerful that I don't think guys completely realize in the bedroom. The power of your physical strength using more aggression and oomph. Okay, so number two is to use the power of your physical strength. Okay, so you guys are really strong out there and I know you probably hold back a lot because of course you don't wanna hurt anybody. And you're probably holding back a little bit because you know you don't wanna hurt anybody. But, but sometimes it's just that little bit more aggression, a little bit more strength, a little bit more intensity that you could tap into Sometimes it's just adding just a, just a little bit more. It's a little bit more intensity, a little bit more strength. That's like an evolutionary primal trigger for her because um, it's like a sign of, you know, fitness. And when she gets that proof of your fitness, it, it takes her up a notch. Because it's that primal trigger, it's a sign of your fitness as a man. And when she gets the proof of your fitness, it's a huge turn on for women. Number four is the power of the threat of discipline. Okay, so number three, the power of playful discipline. So a lot of times guys know, you know, try to maybe like spank her ass or whatever. It's one thing if you're going to spank her bum. That's nice, that's sweet and cute. Number five is the power of rising to her challenge instead of backing down. So number four is the power of standing up to her and or challenging her. Maybe you're with the sassy girl who likes to challenge you. A lot of guys I'm seeing in the comments are taking, in my opinion, the exact wrong attitude. 
oh, I never chase a woman. Um, you know, one wrong move and she's out. She challenges me. She's, you know, too dominant. She's not feminine enough. I'm out. I don't like this kind of strong, um, sassy woman. Guys all over YouTube right now are saying that they're done, right? That a uh, hyper-masculine woman, blah, blah, blah. She's too dominant. She's not feminine enough. I don't do sassy women. Okay, but what you guys are misunderstanding is this is a huge part of female sexuality. Well, what you guys are misunderstanding is a huge part of female sexuality. And that challenge is her way of giving you an opportunity to turn her on. And basically she is handing you an opportunity to turn her on and you're missing it. And if you come up with the right way to respond to her shit test, as I've, you guys have let me know it is called in this community, um, she will get turned on. If you come up with the right way to respond to her playfully, sarcastically, challenge her back and tell her to sit her butt down, you know, you guys are going to have a fruitful relationship. If you can discuss things in a calm manner or basically just any type of challenge that she's giving you, if you are immovable, to turn on. They, they want you to rise to the challenge. And the fact that you rose to the challenge. Number six is... The power of erotic stories and dirty talk. Number five, the power of dirty talk and erotic stories. I've heard people say this, yeah, like, um, you know, dirty talk is women really like, you know, the mental stimulation. We get aroused by reading a book and using our imagination to put our, you know, ourselves into that fantasy. Number seven is the power of pet names. All right, number six is using the power of pet names. On the good side we've got good girl we've got angel we've got princess there's the most common ones baby sweetheart angel princess and on the bad side we've got you know bad girl bitch slut whore and other things like this and then we have things like good girl and bad girl you naughty little thing number eight power that i don't think guys realize the true power of is the power of handling things and taking care of it. Okay, number seven. Now, this is a turn on that can translate into the bedroom, but it is the power of just taking care of things. The power of I got this, which is like this viral article that went around and every girl was sharing it. And it's like, oh, the sexiest thing a man can say is I got this. Saying to a woman, babe, I got this. The other day, I was in this horrible situation in an Airbnb and my boyfriend I was really struggling. My boyfriend just completely took over. He took matters into his own hands without asking me. He wrote them a letter defending me and he negotiated so well that it was surprising to me even how much of a turn on it was. Or if there is something even more pressing and she is stressed the F out, when you take over and fix it or come up with solutions, maybe not to her problems, but that's a whole other video. It's a freaking turn on. Number nine is the power of your lust for her body and you objectifying her body. Okay, so number eight is the power of lusting after her, animalistic style. To feel objectified, to feel man's true lust, and desire to objectify you is incredibly intense. To feel a man's true lust and desire to objectify you is incredibly intense. And I don't think guys even realize like what this feels like from a woman's perspective. And I don't think you guys realize what it feels like from a woman's perspective. I would go back to uh, my ex-boyfriend who really gave me a lot of that like raw lust and kind of like that just male objectifying thing. He has the ability to kind of objectify us a little bit without us taking it personally and or having us feel unsafe. Number 10 that I think is extremely powerful is the power of deep empathy. All right, number nine is the power of emotional connection. Where she releases everything due to you truly seeing understanding her, understanding her points. When you truly see a woman and you understand her point of view, understanding who she is deep down, giving her that deep healing empathy in the bedroom. When she is deeply giving you everything, right? When she is emotional, when she is vulnerable with you. And then, you know, the sex after that and the release after that. It's incredibly deep and powerful for a woman. It is incredibly powerful for your connection inside the bedroom and outside of the bedroom. So, what do you think, folks? 
Do you believe that my non-leather life's claims have any merit? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And by the way, this lady, she doesn't know me, never met her, nor did she ask me to do this video, okay? I'm just a big fan of her channel, and I think she has some really great sound advice. I have also been the victim before of people still in my work, so I know how she feels and thought that this could help her. And hey, we're in the dating space, so you know many of these dating talking points do get repeated after a while. But you know, like when I quote people on my channel, whether it's Corey Wayne or Doc Love or David D'Angelo or anybody that I followed to help me on my journey, if I quote any of their stuff, I always give credit. And all we're asking for is if you're doing that, allegedly you're doing that, giving credit is is a better way to go than just taking it as your stuff and saying, yep, I came up with this. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace. You's a bad boy, but you can't stop. Won't stop. Let's you are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high class man. You are high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high.